but I've been in very heavy, heavy winds for about uh, 18 hours. The winds have got up to about 70, 80 knots. In fact, I was seeing over 80 knots on, on the B&G wind instruments. Uh, and then all of a sudden I heard a crack and the boat capsized. I was waiting for it to come up again. In fact, I rolled over when the boat went and I was standing on the, uh, on the coach roof, which was below me now. Um, and I was saying, come on, old girl, up you get, up you get. And after a few seconds, I said, God, I think it's the keel. Uh, and it was the keel. The keel had snapped off, and that's when I knew I was in trouble. I'm 1,500 miles from Australia, close to Antarctica. The winds are getting up now to ridiculous squall, you know, sort of blowing through at 100 miles an hour now and then. A mountain of seas are coming over the boat. I can't get off the boat. I can't imagine anyone coming all the way down there to, to rescue me. Um, I'm on my own. Um, what am I going to do? So it was really a case of me uh, sitting down and rolling another cigarette and thinking it through. I mean, the first thing was I had to get out of my oilers and get into a survival suit. Uh, I had to uh, um, sort out my um, uh, EPIRBs, you know, my distress beacons, etc and see what I could um, put together, that everything had turned upside down in the boat, you know, food was all over the place, the little food I had, most of the food was in the, under the cockpit sole at the back of the boat in deep store. Uh, and um, it was a case of uh, trying to keep warm, uh, banging my hands together, banging my feet on, 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 the, on the bottom of the boat, you know, which was the coat roof, uh, trying to keep myself from uh, falling asleep and dehydrating, hypothermia was setting in, Frostbite was getting into my feet rapidly. My head didn't feel too good. Um, so it was really a case of hanging in there and fighting on all the time. Uh, and, and I was perpetually alert, listening to uh, uh, cracks and different noises and thumps against the side of the hull. Uh, when it's excruciated, you know, the, the noise was really quite unbelievable. It was like being uh, in, a, in a washing machine, you know, you could imagine with the boat rolling and pitching, the water's rushing around all over the place inside the boat. Uh, some light uh, came down through the water, sort of filtered up into the boat, so I, uh, about noon for a couple of hours before and after, I could actually uh, 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 faintly see around the boat, which was quite a relief. Uh, and then it gradually and very quickly went pitch dark again. And, uh, and you know, it was, that was another thing, you know, being able to cope with the, the pitch black darkness that you can't see anything. Well, after four or five days, I um, thought, well, I can probably hang in here for another day and a half, two days, uh, maybe a little longer, but uh, you know, my energy was draining rapidly. My feet was blocks of ice uh, and my hands had gone. Uh, and then all of a sudden I heard this sort of choo 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 choo, uh, but I put my ear close to the side of the hull, pressed it hard, and I could actually hear uh, people shouting outside, uh, and I thought, that's it. So I started to shout, I'm in here, I'm in here, uh, I'm coming out, and I took a deep breath, dived down, swam away from the boat, broke service, and right in front of me was the the, the Adelaide, it was fantastic. She was probably uh, three or four hundred meters from my vessel and I said, God, I've been saved. Big green come over my face and it was like heaven. He, he sort of laid me down and he started to wrap tinfoil around me uh, and um, quite frankly, I said, uh, uh, where are you from? He said, Australia, Australian Navy. He said, you're all right, just relax. We'll have you on the ship in a minute. You, you, you're okay now. And I looked at him and said, um, uh, daft as it might sound, God, if you didn't have that beard, I'd give you a kiss on the cheek. Uh, and uh, he said, don't worry about the beard. So I gave him a quick pecker on the cheek. And I think the, uh, there was a few cameras on board the Adelaide that clicked away there. And I think the next day there was a picture of me kissing Chief Petty Officer Wicker, you know, and all the newspapers in the world. I mean, when I, when I got on board uh, the Adelaide, I was uh, taken out of the, uh, the rib and put on a stretcher. Uh, and uh, two seamen uh, whisked me down, you know, through the companionway hatch down the, uh, down to the sick bay, um, and I was very quickly attended to. I was put on uh, drips, and you know, my feet were uh, um, you know, bandaged and treated, etc. Um, I was given sort of a different medication, and in fact, um, uh, after that, I ended up in the, in the PO's mess uh, where I billeted until we got to Australia and the guys in there were absolutely fantastic. Someone would get me breakfast in the morning and I'd 
sit there being looked after at lunchtime something else would turn up and in the evening a, a massive plate of food would turn up and I'd say I can't eat all this and oh you've got to get you get it down you, you know you, you've got to get your strength back and, and everyone looked after me absolutely fantastic and I'd like to everyone to know my feelings on this you know it was just splendid absolutely splendid well I'd like to say hi and have a beer with all the guys off of uh, off of the Adelaide to start with, especially Jock and Ginger, Knocker, uh, and a few of the other guys uh, in the PO's mess uh, that I billeted in when I was down there. Um, uh, I'd like to have a beer with uh, 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 Jim Mansell. He was the executive officer on the ship. He actually came over. He was the officer in charge that came over to XI Challenger to get me. Uh, and, of course, uh, I'd, I'd love to meet up with... Uh, uh, Pete Wicker, uh, CPO Wicker, he's now retired, I believe, uh, and it'd be great uh, uh, to meet up with uh, Captain Raiden Gates. He's actually, uh, I do believe, an admiral now, a uh, uh, very, very big ranker. Uh, I'll have to salute him next time I see him. You know, he's, uh, he's very special. Uh, but um, I think um, it would be great just to be there. Uh, there are an immense bunch of people. If it wasn't for the Australians, I wouldn't be here. I mean, the Defence Force has done a fantastic job. Uh, for them to uh, to muster up a ship and the crew uh, and, and get 1,500 miles down into the Southern Ocean uh, uh, to rescue me uh, is something I can never forget all my life. And I do a lot of travelling around the world. And uh, occasionally I give a talk here and there. And I can't say enough for Australia because uh, it's an absolutely great country. If I was a, if I was a young man and I was looking for somewhere to start a new life, uh, I'd be out there like a rocket.